Hi creators, uh, Doro here and uh, just back from my walk again and today I learned that we have wild geraniums around here. Um, one of these days I'll figure out how to post pictures. I'll work on that soon, but it's just an amazing uh, shaped leaf. So it stood out and I had to look it up. Um, geraniums are not edible. <laughs> In fact, they're a little toxic, I guess. Um, so that's what I learned today. I also found a, a, a kind of mushroom. I don't know much about mushrooms at all. Um, yeah, every day I learn a little bit um, just to know what's around me. We have so much abundance here. In yesterday's video, I said we uh, have uh, black cohosh here and wild comfrey. Who knew? It's all these medicinal herbs. So yeah, just getting to know those green things out there. <laughs> it's harder and harder to weed my garden because I don't see any bad guys anymore. You know, oh, there's wood sorrel and there's uh, plantain and there, <laughs> so no more bad guys. Um, so anyway, today's videos, I picked out um, just an amazing video uh, talk with Charles Eisenstein um, who I talk about a lot because I uh, really resonate with his message, um, that we need to tell a new story in our world um, because things are kind of coming to a chaotic head, I would say. Um, and I, what I ha just out of curiosity, I had to uh, listen to these um, talks by Noam Chomsky brilliant, brilliant mind from MIT. Uh, he's been around since I was a kid, so he's he's been around a long time. And he, uh, he has a, I learned something very profound that when I hear somebody say the word anarchy, I'm like, oh, that's like utter, total chaos, everybody killing everybody, things falling apart. It's just anarchy. It's like chaos. Those are two similar words in my mind. Apparently, anarchy is not that at all. It's in effect, well, I'll put a couple links below about his point of view, but um, it's, it's um, society without rulers, even though there are rules, um, and that's probably in about as small a nutshell as I can possibly put it. Um, it it's pretty uh, interesting how we've all kind of been um, sort of trained into that word, anarchy, uh, to be the equivalent to chaos. That was like branded into my brain and apparently that's not it at all it's just a society without rulers even though there are rules it's like a, um you know i could say a, a beehive or something there's a there's a queen but she's not ruling she's you know laying eggs but uh, so it's it's got rules everybody goes and you know everybody's got their little worker bees and the whatever bees and uh so there's structure, but it's not dictated by anyone or any level of hierarchy. Um, so that was interesting. In, in that regard, it almost sounds, uh, gosh, you know, something that has been scary to me all my life is actually uh, what I'm wanting. <laughs> so go figure. So I'll put a couple of those links below. Uh, Noam Chomsky talking about that word. Uh, anarchy. Um, the My favorite video that I'm sharing today is, uh, as I said, Charles Eisenstein, and this one talks about not falling into the trap of uh, having our attention diverted away from issues that need to be addressed, and we end up spending all of our time fighting the bad guys and um, and it's a complete diversion. Um, so yeah, he. I'm just looking at notes here. Um, it, it's a tactic to divert attention away because 
um, any any process of transition is, is going to have, you know, something struggling. Um, and and what Charles is actually saying, don't get caught in, in the diversion trap where when we actually need to be creating our new story. Um, and, I, and he's great because he really speaks my language. I'm finding a lot of people saying this now that we got to just turn away from the chaos because that's going to pull everybody into the blame game and scapegoating and fight the bad guys. We've got to use our attention right now to create a new story. And, uh, you know, that's not a, that's, you could say that's a rebellion, but it, it's actually just uh, phasing out and phasing in, which I've said before, which goes right along with the uh, Aquarian age, which I said yesterday, is we, uh, th this is taking down hierarchies and becoming more of a level playing field and going from a centralized everything to a decentralized everything. Um, centralized means there's always somebody at the top of the pyramid, you know, dictating what goes on underneath. Decentralized means, you know, you've got um, something, but everybody's kind of sharing in the um, creation of it. So, um, so that for me talks about blockchain technologies. I mean, what better time to create a, uh, a new world <laughs> with uh, decentralized everything? I, I, I don't, don't know anything about technical anything, but I know blockchain is a decentralized uh, technology. And it can be used for transferring, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin. I don't know how it works. But something there tells me that that could potentially play a, a good part in the future. But um, not globally. I mean, we, we still want to talk to each other. But I think we're aiming at more self-reliance, um, smaller communities, but still connected. Uh, anyway, that's, that's me jabbering. So this, this uh, video is also about, uh, he, he brings up the issue of the rainforest, uh, the burnings and cutting down of the rainforests in Brazil, and that, that we are being uh, diverted. Now this, this video was a couple of years ago, I think so. But you can see it happening on every issue in the news, is pulling our attention away from what we need to be doing now. The ship's going down. And we got to start thinking about steps. Farmers uh, in the Netherlands, you know, truckers all over. I mean, the, the farmers and the truckers, it feels to me like they are, they could be picking up momentum, even though it's not getting a lot of coverage. Uh, and they really pretty much run the show, don't they? <laughs> uh, transportation and food. So... So this video um, sharing with, with Charles is very, very powerful. He talks about morphic resonance. And I love this term uh, because it speaks to the butterfly effect, I think, where if I do something with the intention of something, that sends out a morphic resonance, almost as though... Um, sending out waves. Uh, you know, imagine we're in water and you do something, okay, it sends out waves. Uh, and, and those waves, if you think in terms of f physics, those waves are not a proximal thing. That, that wave can actually affect the other side of the world. That's the butterfly effect. So, if a few people begin to put their heads together about a new story, uh, which for me seems to be leaning towards how do we, you know, unplug and become community. No idea. We're all so addicted to our electronics. Um, don't know where that's going to go. Somebody better get creative. <laughs> uh, it could go anywhere. But so morphic resonance, res resonance talks about um, 
if I do something, there's a there's an effect. There's almost a psychic uh, resonance that, that goes around the world or around the universe. And people begin to pick it up. You know, sometimes you just pick up a thought. It's almost like it's passing over like a cloud and it, and, and you can see it and, it and you feel it. And so you pick up a thought. And that's what I feel when I'm meditating because I'm a meditation teacher. When I go into a very quiet place, I can almost just hear the thoughts just going around that, without relating to them, but they're out there. You know, these thoughts are not necessarily mine. What I pull in is only because I'm tuned to those thoughts. Uh, so if you're putting out a creative idea, um, you know, it, it may happen that I just so so happen to, to pick that up at the same time. Um, I'm sure you've all had that. <laughs> these, you know, oh gosh, I was just going to call you or, you know, that's exactly what I was thinking. And um, so these are these are those if we say it, if we do it, if we make any movement in a direction, if we, you know, call a friend and, and say it, these, these have effects around uh, the quantum field and create, this is how we tell a new story. Um, so, so the new story that we want to tell, you know, I've got my story that I would like to tell, you know, that all ha has to do with music and community and um you know i don't want to go backwards if you ever seen the movie uh the mailman with oh gosh what was his name anyway check it out it's a post-apocalyptic thing but it, people end up just creating community and being cut off um so yeah for me that's my vision what what do we think what do we want this is not just me this is us creating a new story and my question today, see, the, the, the place I think where we kind of get snagged <clears throat> is when we, um, when we start, start feeling our beliefs are getting in the way. Um, you know, okay, that could never happen, and uh, that won't happen because of this, and it won't work, and I'll tell you why. And, and uh, those beliefs... Uh, Where'd they come from? That's my question. What makes you believe something? Um, Ram Dass said there were three ways to believe something. Either you believe it just because you're not thinking about it and everybody believes it. It's just the thing to do. Um, or you believe it because you have seen it, you've experienced it, you've been in it, you believe it, whatever it is. The third way to believe something is if someone you trust very highly um, tells you. Now, that could be a, a religious figure. It could be a friend. I don't know. But it's something you take on as a belief. Uh, so my question is, what makes you believe something? And how do we um, just look at that? Is, is that? is that... A real good way to believe something right now you know it used to be that when you turn on the TV and you watch the evening news everybody believed it there was no question um, this is what's happening in the world period uh, <laughs> but I think we've all kind of been uh, corrupt a little bit we you know one bad uh, proven thing after another I mean it's just anything all the the fake videos and the fake um, recordings and the, the blame games going on around the government and nobody really knows what's going on. But everybody's trying to get us to believe their way, their story, their whatever. Um, so I'm just like, you know what, I don't believe any of it. I don't believe anything. I share these videos only because they resonate with my heart and they make sense. Um, you know, I'm not going to get all riled up and sucked in. At least I'm going to try not to. Um, because when we're quiet inside is when we can feel which way to go and what the next step is. And uh, things things are more doable that way. So 
My question is, what makes you believe something? And so with that, let's keep putting our heads together and figure out what's our new story. Until then, stay creative.